Welcome back to my writer's room, everyone. I am Matt Wallace, YouTube's resident angry writer, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to come hang out with me here in my angry, lonely little writerly sanctum. I always appreciate that. I really do. Uh, me not being naked on the vlog is brought to you, as always, by our t-shirt of the day, and I love this one. It's my Four Horsemen Forever uh, retro t-shirt. Uh, love this. Never had a Four Horsemen uh, t-shirt before. The legendary stable of the 80s. Um, yeah, I got this out of uh, this month's Pro Wrestling Crate. As always, you can see me unbox those over on my Pro Wrestling channel, Matt F. and Wallace. If you're into that kind of thing, if not, no worries. We're here on Angry Rider to talk about Angry Rider type things. It is January 25th, 2018. It is Thursday. You've almost made it to the end of the week, folks. You're almost there. Bear down, as they tell Pregnant women, I guess, is a thing they tell pregnant women giving birth. Bear down and uh, keep slogging through. You're almost there. Hamshackle Pig, as you can see, has got his uh, quill and uh, parchment out, and he's waiting for the muse, as all of us writers do. I figure Hamshackle Pig writes. Um, what, do you th <laughs> what do you think is Hamshackle's genre? I don't really picture him, for some reason, as like a sci-fi fantasy guy. I think, you know what I think, Hamshackle is probably, you know what I like to think? I like to think Hamshackle Pig is writing like the definitive history and biography of the monster truck grave digger from the 70s and 80s. I just like that idea that that's what he's like, like a thousand page exhaustive history of the uh, monster truck grave digger. I just like that he's so into monster trucks on a really academic intellectual level and that he chose Gravedigger instead of Bigfoot, which would be the natural choice. That to me just says Hamshackle. I don't know why. I've obviously taken this bit way too far for the title card, but that's, that's, <laughs> let's just move on. You're not ready. You're really not ready. Wait for it, okay? Wait for it. Da da, da da, da 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 da. Oh, son. Oh, it's real. It's a real thing. That's a book. Um, yeah, man, I got, uh, I got three of these yesterday. It is the ARC, or Advanced Reader Copy, of, uh, Taste of Wrath, the final Sindiger book. It is a real thing I'm holding in my hands. Um, this is not the finished retail version of the book, obviously, if you're not familiar with what an Advanced Reader Copy is. You can see the little tag there that says, Uncorrected Proof Not For Sale. This is basically the galley proof of the final version of the book that they send out to, you know, reviewers and distributors. And you can see there, like, on the back, it has all the marketing information for the book. And that will all change when you get your copy in April when they come out. So it's not the final version of the book, but it is damn close. It's a real book. It's what the final version will look like. And it's all it's all in here, man. It's it's the end of the road for the Sinister series. I've I'm wrapping it up. Uh, me and Tor.com Publishing and all my sin, eater, sin eaters out there who've been following along with the series since uh, 2015 and Enemy of Angels, uh, the story's coming to an end, and I cannot believe uh, that we're here. I really can't. It's um, holding this thing is really emotional for me on a lot of levels. Uh, it's a hell of a thing. And I thought I would uh, talk about that uh, today in this episode of the vlog. So holding this book, I, I have all the feels. I feel all kinds of ways. I really do. I feel proud. I'm immensely proud that, um, you know, all seven books that I've written them and they're all going to be published. And that I've been able to tell this whole story and I'm going to see the end of it. With all of you folks who've been following along, it makes me feel nostalgic. You know, this is this is four years of my life. This story, I started writing this in 2014, and here we are, 2018, and it's going to conclude. And uh, and that those last four years were incredibly formative for me, man. I you know I moved in with my uh, with my girlfriend, who I then proposed to, who became my fiance who then became my wife and we bought a new home together and got married and moved out. I mean, there were, it was the biggest four years of my life. And a lot of that is centered around the writing of these Sinister books that have been coming out that whole time. Um, you know, I feel disappointment, honestly. It's, they're, they're not all good emotions. I feel disappointment. I, you know, 
as proud as I am of this series and as nostalgic as it makes me to be holding the final book, it hasn't found the audience yet that I feel like it deserves. It, has, it certainly hasn't made me the money I was hoping it would make me. Um, even though I'm very proud of the reviews and the readership that it does have and I'm proud of the books themselves, there's a fair amount of disappointment in how the in how the releases have gone. I was, you know, you 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 hope for so much, and barring so much, you hope for enough. And I don't even feel like we made it to enough. And there's a lot of disappointment that the seventh book is coming out, and it still is not found as broad a readership or as much commercial success as I honestly believe the series is worth and merits. You know, um, I feel nerves and anxiety. You know, I'm incredibly anxious about this book in particular coming out. It's the last book. You know, people have read along for six books, 250,000 words, three years, and now I'm wrapping up the story and I'm nervous that hardcore fans are going to read it and um, they're not going to be satisfied about it or they're going to hate it or they're not going to like the ending I came up with it. You know, finales are very tough and that's essentially what this is. It's a series finale. So the um, and nerves and anxiety are, are a huge thing that I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling grateful to that same readership that's come with me this far. I'm feeling grateful to my editor, Lee Harris, who's, you know, worked side by side with me on this whole series and championed this series and made sure that we've gotten to book seven. And I'm grateful to Tor.com Publishing for agreeing to do this and Irene Gow, the associate publisher, and the whole crew there who helped uh, make these books what they are. And I'm grateful to my wife who uh, who was so supportive and always my first reader on these and just is one of the main reasons I was able to do this. I'm grateful to my agent, Dong Won Song, um, for all his help and work uh, coming along in the series with me. I, I feel so much gratitude to so many people and that's a big, that's a big emotion. Um, I feel so much uh, holding this book right now, but Right now, today, I'd honestly, what I'd like to do is just strip all of that away, really. I want to boil things down to the basics, and I want to talk about, ultimately, what it means to write uh, and publish a book. That, that's what I want to talk about. All of those other feelings and all of those broader issues and all of those concerns aside, what does it mean to write and publish a book? So let's strip it all away, all right? All the bullshit, all the ultimately meaningless stuff about this process. Let's forget about money. Let's forget about sales. Let's forget about contracts and royalties and earning out. Uh, let's forget about your book scan numbers and your Goodread uh, rating and your Amazon rating and reviews. And let's forget about the book bloggers and the critics. Let's forget about how many fucking Twitter followers you have. Let's forget about all that crap, you know, uh, the panels you get on at cons and how much status you have at the bar at the con. All the petty business and cultural and uh, social and societal crap that surrounds being an author, especially an author of genre fiction. Let's set it all aside. Just dump it all out of the attic and just look at what this thing really is. Let's look at what a book, writing and publishing a book, really is. And when you get down to it, man, the the amazing thing, the truly wondrous, you know, uh, you know, no no jadedness, no cynicism, all that aside, the really wondrous thing about that is you have this thing that you willed into the world all on your own, single handedly, and that's that's what's amazing. This this book here, this this only exists because I took it upon myself to will it into the world, to write the contents of the book and to go out and uh, get the book, find people who believed in the book and get it published. Uh, that all happened because I willed it to happen. This would not exist. This would, this would not be a thing if I hadn't done that. And that I really believe is a truly amazing thing that we overlook so much of the time as authors and as creators. You can apply this to, to making an album or painting a picture or you know any, any really any other kind of creation that these things would not exist if we had not willed them into the world and you know the no, no author no creator is an island like i said i have an editor i have copy editors i have graphic designers i have an agent i have beta readers i have readers out there buying the book i am grateful to all those people they all added something to this process and <clears throat> we would not be where we are and then this book would also not exist without all of those pieces of the puzzle coming together but I am the only one like all authors who can claim the creator title on that everyone else who comes into the process as helpful as they are and as grateful as I am to them they are all adapting from what you're doing 
okay? It all springs from you. And it's such and it's such a bananas thing to even think about. You know, nobody came to me and said, hey, Matt, we want you to write a long series of short books about a catering company that caters to supernatural creatures. And we want it to be funny and foodie, but also dark and messed up. <coughs> Excuse me. That never happens. Um, I came up with this idea. I hounded Lee Harris at Tor.com about it. I gave him my best sell. I somehow convinced them to go along with this for two books originally. And I somehow managed to keep them believing in it for an additional five and, and to do the whole series. And I wrote that whole freaking series, man. You know, the thing is, as many people as help you with this process, none of those people are there at 3 a.m. when you have a deadline on the book the next day, frantically trying to finish the thing and make it as good as you can possibly make it and make it all the things you want it to be. And that is a fantastical thing. That is a thing that most people in the world never do. It really is. Not that other professions aren't completely valid and not that there aren't a million forms of creation, but this is a very specific type of creation. And it's honestly a rare one. As much as we feel like there's a glut of books, there's millions of them, what does mine, what does one more matter? Everybody's a freaking writer. That's not the truth, man. It's really not. It's a rare thing to conceive an idea, carry that idea all the way from inception through execution to the finish line of finishing a whole book. Just that in and of itself is a thing not everybody can do. And then to sell other people <coughs> on your imaginary creation enough that they put all this money and all this time and all this effort behind it to realize it as an actual physical book that then goes out and affects the lives of other people. And that's, a, yeah, that's the other amazing thing about it is just to make a book is, 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 is bananas enough. But then it goes out and it has this tremendous effect on the people who read it, you know. And I've acknowledged, Sin du Jour, I don't, I don't think any of these books are brilliant. I don't think I'm brilliant. I don't think they're life-changing. I don't think that they need to be preserved in a time capsule in the Library of Congress. But they've made people laugh and they've made people cry and they've and they've comforted people on their lunch hours and their commutes and the, in those time in those alone times at home when they needed escape it gave that to them and that's ultimately the purpose of books I feel like and I like so many other authors was able to do that and it is such an amazing thing that we don't stop to just appreciate in the face of all that other crap that we get wrapped in you know, wrapped up in. All those things about sales and numbers and the perception of others, of peers and critics and readers and status and all of these things that we become obsessed with once we write the book, we don't ever shove all that aside and just look at the thing for what it is. We willed this thing into being and then we put it out there in the world and we were able to affect other people with this thing that we created completely from scratch that didn't exist until we created it. That's an amazing thing. That's what it means to write a book and that's what's so amazing about writing a book. And at the end of the day, the rest of that crap just doesn't, it doesn't matter, it really doesn't. The sun's gonna explode, the earth's gonna go with it, all this stuff is gonna be wiped away. All that matters is we did it, we were able to accomplish that, and we were able to affect other people with it in the time we had to do that. That's what it means to write a book, and that is the amazing thing about writing a book to me. So the best advice I can give you, honestly, sitting here, uh, as a 35-year-old man who has 12 years in this business, who's written 9 or 10 published books and over 100 published short stories, and has written for television and has written a lot of movies that have never been produced, and has had a million times more uh, failures than he's had successes, but has had successes that have changed his life, as someone uh, sitting on top of all of that... The best advice I can give you is not about the craft of writing. It's not about the business of writing, even though those things are important. The best advice I can give you is not to lose sight of what it really means to write a book, of why you wanted to do this in the first place. It wasn't about money because we don't get the money. We do. We very rarely have ever get the money. You either have to be very lucky or willing to work extremely hard to make to make. Um, the kind, the kind of money that would motivate you to go through this really arduous process of writing and publishing uh, books. It's not about the money. You don't, you didn't do it for the fame because that part of you knows you're never going to really be famous. There are maybe three famous authors in the whole world who are truly famous. 
The most the rest of us get is notoriety within a very limited uh, circle of people. You know, you didn't do it for the prestige, you didn't do it for the glory, you did it because you had an idea and you wanted to see if you could bring that idea out and execute it and make it a thing. If you could tell that story exactly the way you wanted to tell it. And when you told that story exactly the way you wanted to tell it, you wanted to see if you could sell other people on your imaginary world. That's what it's all about. And whether it's a publisher or a readership or all of the above, that's all you wanted. You wanted to make a thing and you wanted to make other people believe in that thing. And for four years, for seven books, for 300,000 words, that's what I wanted to accomplish with Sin Jour. I wanted to tell a story that kept people locked into that story, that compelled them and made them want to know what was going to happen next. I wanted to create situations that made them laugh and made them gasp and made them believe. And I wanted to create characters that they would come to see as friends, if not family, that they would care about as if they were real people. That's what I wanted to do with the books. And I have all these other things that I would that that I want to do that I want to accomplish on top of that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's when you get into the career and the money and all that other stuff. You know, I want to have a good career. I want to sell books. I still have massive ambitions for Sinister as a series. I wanted to find the audience I wanted to find. I want to adapt it to television. That's always been one of my huge goals and something I'm going to continue to work on. But at base at a base level. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see if I could take this idea in my head and make it into a thing that people would believe in. That is what I want you to never lose sight of as creators out there. That's what's important. The rest of it can burn in a fire and it doesn't really matter ultimately. It starts with that and it ends with that and the rest is gravy and I love gravy. No one's bigger. You know, brown gravy, white gravy, I don't care. Cover it and everything. I'll eat it. Gravy's fantastic, but the basic uh, nutrients of being an author is all that other stuff that I that I just that I just outlined. So grab hold of that and keep it close to you, and always, always keep that in focus. Whenever all of the other stuff, the numbers and the money and uh, the ego and all of those things start to to obscure it, always be able to keep a uh, sight of why you wanted to do this and what was important about doing this. And I guarantee you, your life will be better for it, your work will be better for it, your self-esteem will be better for it, everything will be better for it. I, I promise you that. So just do me that favor. Try to never lose sight of that as a creator. That's gonna be it for today, folks. Uh, I, gotta, I, feel, I feel almost cheap uh, doing this, but this is part of the game too, uh, is the promotion side of things. Uh, Taste of Wrath is available for pre-order right now. Um, it comes out April 10th. If you have yet to check out my Sinister series, please go back and start with Envy of Angels, the first book that came out in October 2015. Get them all. Uh, you can get them all fairly cheap. There's a bundle of the first three books on Amazon for I think like six bucks. You can get the first three books for like six bucks. Go check out the series. I'm, I'm intensely proud of uh, of the work I've done on this and the work everyone else who put in work on this did. I think we made a great thing. I'm excited to see it come to an end. I think I wrote a really great spectacular ending for it. I'm very satisfied with it and I'm not someone who's satisfied by their own work very often. So if you've come this far, um, this is on the horizon and I hope you enjoy it. If you've yet to take the trip, get in the car and let's go, man. You've got until April to catch up and I hope everybody will do that. Links in the description below. Spread it from the mountaintop. Let everybody know about it. Um, again, I just I really believe in this series. I'm really proud of it. And I really think if you try it, it's something that'll make you laugh and make you cry and, and get you out of your head for a few hours of the day. And that at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So please do that for me. I'd really appreciate it. Support the series. Buy it. Read it. Tell other people about it. That's Those are the key things. Uh, and I will be grateful for each of them that uh, that you do for me. In the meantime, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the video, what you're thinking about the vlog, ask me a question, suggest a topic for me to talk about. I just like hearing from you, so please hit the comments. Um, I will be back to round out the week tomorrow. Until then, I am Matt Wallace. I'll see you Friday.